Peace, peace, peace. It's Magnificent Magic Monday. And welcome to another day to get in the word and see what the most I got to say. Another day to labor in the vineyard of the most high with your brother. And what we gonna see today, we gonna see the mystery of what the cherubim and flaming sword is that got placed to the east of the Garden of Eden when Adam got kicked out and how that relate to the powers of the most high that we trying to receive that we working for during our time here in probation in the flesh. All right? So we gonna start in the sealed portion. We gonna start in the sealed portion. Chapter 44. Seal portion chapter 44. In verse 18. Now, here is somewhat of a mystery that, that I will explain unto you of the later, later days, of the latter days. For I have explained unto you what Sherubim and the flaming sword symbolizes. Even that it symbolizes the veil of forgetfulness. It symbolizes the veil of forgetfulness that is placed upon us so that we cannot remember in the flesh those things which occurred before the days of our probation, that we may be more thoroughly tested by faith. Again, the cherubim and the flaming sword symbolizes the veil of forgetfulness that is placed upon us so that we cannot remember in the flesh those things which occurred before the days of our probation, that we may be more thoroughly tested by faith. All right? So when we was kicked out the Garden of Eden, it was a veil placed upon our minds so that we can remember spiritually what occurred before we got placed in the flesh. All right. And like you say right here, the most I did that so that we may be more thoroughly tested by faith. All right. That way we was forced to go out and dig and dig and dig the search and find the truth, the truth of our existence, all right? The truth of our reason for being here, the truth of who we are as spirits, and the truth of where we came from, which is the spiritual realm, all right? Because we the children of the light. So we had to go searching to find the light, which is the truth to awaken us to cast off the veil of forgetfulness that's been placed upon our minds. And that's the difference between the children of the light and the children of Satan. The children of Satan do not care where they came from. They just want to enjoy the pleasures of the flesh and the delicacies that Satan has placed here in the carnal realm for them to enjoy. All right? Precept. Let's go to seal portion, chapter 17. Let's get a precept. Seal portion, chapter 17, verse 32. Because remember, the time of probation is our time in the flesh. Seal portion 17, verse 32. Now, in general terms, a probationary period means a period in which a critical examination or evaluation, yea, even the subjection to this critical examination 
or evaluation is performed. This period or trial of subjection is necessary to ascertain fitness or in other words, worthiness. All right? So our time of probation in the flesh is to judge our worthiness. To see whether we are worthy to go back home. If not, the most high out of love then created another place that he going to send us. Along with the fallen angels and Satan. All right. So that's that's what we down here doing in our time of probation. We proving our worthiness. Most high. I want to come back home. I want to go back to the light from where we came from. But the most I know, the majority of his children, they not out here searching for the light. That's why he say only a remnant is going to return. All right? And that's why most people can't accept the truth of the scriptures. All right? Another precept. Let's go to seal portion chapter 6, verse 35. Upon experiencing... This period of probation, a soul must lose all power over the elements in nature and be subject to the power of natural effects, which will the soul weak and de debilitated even unto death. All right. So we see during our time in the flesh, we lose our powers, all right? The powers that we possess are stripped from us when we get put in the flesh in our time of probation. Like I said right here, we lose all our power over the elements in nature, all right? Because the most High got power over all them things. Our big brother Jesus, brother Jesus, Yahweh Shai, Yeshia, Esau, Emmanuel, Yeshua, he had power over the elements. All right. Let's continue. We're going to see that. We're going to get into that. Seeing how our powers was took. Another little precept. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to the beginning. The book of Genesis. Chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. All right. So that's where the mystery of the cherubims and the flaming sword initially came from. At the beginning, when Adam was kicked out of Eden, the Most High told us, cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way, was placed to keep the way of the tree of life. All right, let's keep eating. We're going to put this whole puzzle piece together right here. Next, we're going to go to 1 Nephi, chapter 1. So we got the we see what the cherubims and the flaming sword what represent the veil of forgiveness. Now we gotta understand the tree of life. First Nephi 11, chapter 11, verse 25. And it came to pass that I beheld that the rod of iron which my father had seen was the word of the Most High, which led to the fountain of living waters or to the tree of life. The tree of life is the fountain of living waters. All right, again, and this is Nephi speaking, the head prophet over here in the Americas. And it came to pass that I beheld that the rod of iron 
which my father had seen was the word of God, which led to the fountain of living waters or to the tree of life. All right, so we see the word is which leads us to the living waters or the tree of life. So we can't get back to the tree of life without the word. All right. Sanctify them with thy truth. And thy truth is the word. John 17 and 17. Which is the only way to get to the tree of life. All right. Because like in the last video, the earth is going to be returned back to the state it was in the time of the beginning. During the Garden of Eden. All right. And the wicked is going to be cast off because only the remnant that sought to find their way back to the garden is worthy of being in the garden because everybody else is dirty. And the most I say, if you dirty, you ain't coming back in the house. Plain and simple. All right, back to the verse 25, second part of it. All right, hold on. We're going to scroll back up some. The word of God, which led to the fountain of living waters or to the tree of life, which waters are a representation of the love of God, the love of your creator, the love of the most high. And I also beheld that the tree of life was a representation of of the love of God, the love of your creator. All right. And the only way to get to the tree of life or the love of the most high is through the word, the word, which is the living waters that nourish your spirit, spiritual nutrition. People is spiritually dry. Their spirit is hungry. And they ain't getting fed because they don't know where to eat from. All right? They don't know where the tree of life at. So they can't get no spiritual nutrition. They eating off dead trees, dead bushes, dead vines, dead doctrines. They not eating from the tree of life. All right? Another precept. Let's go to 1 Nephi. Chapter 15, verse 28. Let's get more clarification. First Nephi 15, verse 28. And I said unto them that it was an awful gulf which separated the wicked from the tree of life and also from the saints of God. Again, and I said unto them that it was an awful God which separated the wicked from the tree of life and also from the saints of God. All right. So it's a, it's a big separation that's going on again now. All right. Being that we getting closer and closer to the end of the 6,000 years. All right. And like you said right here, it's an awful God. All right. That separate the wicked from the tree of life. All right. Because the wicked not coming to the tree of life. All right. Because they not going to accept our big brother as the way to get there. And those that denounce him, they have no way of finding the tree of life or even knowing what the tree of life is. All right. Let's keep eating. Verse 36. Wherefore, the wicked are rejected from the righteous and also from that tree of life. The wicked are rejected from the love of their creator. They don't want to eat that fruit. All right. The wicked are rejected from the tree of life. They rejected from the living waters. All right. They can't get no natural nutrition from the spirit. All right. 
They not eating. They hungry. And hungry folks is not coming back into the kingdom because you was hungry by choice. The most I got plenty of food out here and he got plenty of people feeding the food. But the fool don't want to eat. He only want to feed his flesh. He don't want to feed his spirit. And if you spiritually anorexic, the most high ain't letting you back in the house. No, no, most high don't rock like that. Wherefore, the wicked are rejected from the righteous and also from that tree of life whose fruit is most precious and most desirable above all other fruits. Yea, and it is the greatest of all the gifts of the Most High. And thus I spake unto my brethren. All right. The fruit from the tree of life, the love of your creator is the greatest fruit that you can partake of. All right. Ain't no greater nutrition than the tree of life. All right. Uh, let's get more clarification. Second Nephi. Let's go to Second Nephi. Second Nephi chapter 2. Verse 15. And to bring about his eternal purposes in the end of man, speaking on the most high, and to bring about his eternal purposes in the end of man after he had created our first parents speaking on Adam and Eve and the beast of the field and the fowls of the air and in fine all things which are created it must needs be that there was in opposition even the forbidden fruit in opposition to the tree of life the one being sweet and the other bitter. All right, so we just seen Nephi say, ain't nothing more precious or desirable than the fruit of the tree of life, which is a representation of the love of your creator. All right, so what is the forbidden fruit that he referring to right here? Is the knowledge of good and evil. All right, because that came from your big brother, Lucifer. All right, so that's the opposite fruit from the tree of life. The people of the world are eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The most I say everything I created was good. Lucifer created the knowledge of good and evil. All right. He was in the garden right there waiting on Adam and Eve because he had already got sent to the earth. And Lucifer, being smarter than the rest, he already was ready with a plan. All right? He got kicked out because he wanted his own plan separate from the plan of the Most High. All right? Let's keep eating. The book of Moses and the pearl of great price. The book of Moses, the pearl of great price. He got to get you a pearl of great price. All right. This is called an LDS quad right here with all the books together. Anybody want to get one? But the pearl of great price, the book of Moses. Moses, chapter three. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Nevertheless, thou may choose for thyself, for it is given unto thee. But remember that I forbid it, for in the day that thou eats thereof, thou shall surely die. Woo. 
All right. So when you eating from the tree of the knowledge and good and evil, you eating from the world, the fruit of the world that Lucifer, the God of the world, is giving to you, which is going to cause death because that's not the tree of life. The tree of life is the love of the most high, the knowledge of the most high, which your big brother, the Christ, came to give you, that separates you from the world. All right. Like he said, be in the world, not of the world. So he came to give us the light to separate us from the world and the people of the world so that we won't have to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Most I don't want us eating from that tree because the fruit is not good fruit. Ain't no good fruit on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why all these deceptions and trickery and all that foolish knowledge come from. Science. All of that mess right there come from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We ain't supposed to be eating that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 19 For the wisdom of this world is foolishness. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men. The most I don't want us eating the knowledge of the world because it is foolishness to the most high. All right. We just see that right here. The knowledge of the world is foolishness to the most high. That's why when you eat it, you're going to die. The world tell you processed foods ain't bad if you eat it in moderation. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. The world tell you. Ain't nothing wrong with watching a little pornography. It teaches something. No, that's not true. According to the Most High, it defiles your spirit. Just like processed food, it defiles the temple of your body. The world, it tell you. You need to eat some of this meat. You need to eat some sweets. You need to eat some fats and oils and all of that. It's all right. It's in the food chart. No, that's not the Most High food chart. Fruits, berries, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains. That's the most high food chart. No, the world then switched up everything. Everything. Science. Science says all right to do some of everything that they can think of to create. And that it's all right. But that's not true. The most high done created everything already. We don't need no, no, no grapples, no grapes mixed with an apple. What is that? We don't need plum cots, plums mixed with apricots. No, most I say don't mix the seeds. But science says it's all right because man might run out of food. Science creates GMO, some of everything. Most I say, no, nah, we don't have no need for all that. But the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of the world, they tell you it's all right. It's all right to do this. It's all right to do that. Everything to get you to go and sin against your spirit. To do everything to devour the temple of your body. To devour the temple of your mind. That's why the Most High always say, renew your mind. You can't renew and cleanse your spirit without renewing your mind. Your mind is in your heart. Clean your heart. All right, but the world, they don't teach you that, oh, your mind is in your brain. And, and, and that's where this, that, and the third come from. No, the most high say your heart, your heart, clean your heart. Second Corinthians, verse chapter four, verse three. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. 
Where they lost that? They lost in the knowledge of good and evil. But if our gospel be hid, if the truth be hid, it is hid to them that are lost and whom the God of this world, Lucifer, Satan, the devil, and whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of the Most High, should shine unto them. So unless they accept the truth, they gonna stay lost, lost in the sauce. They gonna be lost in the matrix, in the wilderness of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's why most people are foolish in the world. The majority of the world is fools. They have not the light to see the truth because of the pride of the world. All right, all their schools with the knowledge of good and evil, which is foolishness to the most high. In the last video, we showed how when Christ come back, he is destroying every institution of learning upon the planet because they teaching the knowledge of good and evil. They teaching the knowledge of Satan. And the most high said, don't eat it. All right, back to the sealed portion, chapter 44. Starting at verse 19. And this cherubim and the flaming sword symbolizes the formation of our mortal cerebrum, which cannot be used to produce those memories which our spirit can readily recall. For if a spirit is placed in a body where the cherubim have not been patterned after the limitations that the father have set by the representation of the cherubim and the flaming sword, then that spirit will be able to react with this cerebrum of flesh and remember all things. All right. So if the Most High didn't put the veil upon your minds, then in the flesh, you will be able to remember the spiritual realm and where we came from. You will have your powers over the elements. Who are the X-Men? We are the X-Men. The X-Men had power over elements. The elements got power over the body and over nature. All right, we going somewhere. Verse 20, for behold, the spirit was created of eternal elements. The spirit was created of eternal elements, which cannot be seen by mortal eyes, but which exists as I have explained it unto you previously. And when the spirit enters into the body, it is able to send certain commands to the elements of the flesh or of nature according to the type of cerebrum that have been given unto the body of flesh. All right. Let's get a precept about the elements. Doctrine and covenants. Doctrine and covenants 93. Doctrine and Covenant 93 and verse 35. The elements are the tabernacle of God. Again, the elements are the tabernacle of the Most High. Yea, man is the tabernacle of the Most High. Even the temples. It tells us in the book of Corinthians, know ye not that ye are the temple of the living God. Your spirit is the inner temple. Your flesh is the outer temple. They go hand in hand, like it say right here. The elements are the tabernacles of God. Yea, man is the tabernacles of God, even the temples. And whatsoever temple is defiled, 
God should destroy that temple. That's why the Most High say you're not coming back home dirty. Because he's going to destroy you. Ain't no dirty temples coming back home. Because the Most High not dirty. So he not allowing dirty filthiness to come into the kingdom. All right. That's why he always say, make your garments white. Make your garments clean. Purify yourself. Purify yourself. Get off them drugs. Get off that pornography. Get off the corner. Get off them wicked TV shows. Stop listening to the nasty music. Stop making them type of songs because you polluting and defiling the temples. The temple of your mind defile the temple of your spirit, which increase the lust of your flesh to defile the temple of your body. It all go hand in hand. Uh, let's keep eating. Back to seal portion 44. Starting at verse 21. And Yeshua, the Christ, was given the cerebrum that was partially patterned after the cerebrum of the Father, who is eternal and who can command all elements. All right. When you think of the cerebrum, think about the mind's eye. What they teach us is the third eye, the seat of your consciousness. Your spiritual eye, your mind eye. That's the cerebrum we speaking of, that the veil has been placed upon. The more the word we get, the more our spiritual eye open up. What did he teach us? Let the light of thy eyes be single. Therefore, the cerebrum of Yahweh Shai was so constructed that the spirit of Yahweh Shai could command the elements like unto the Father, but was restricted in some senses because of the order of nature in which he was created by his mother, Mary. All right, Ramona, they was on the boat. Christ walked on the water to get to him. Power over the elements. Then he stopped the storm. And what the disciples say, what type of man is this? What type of man is this that can control the weather? The weather is the elements. When he raised Lazarus from the dead, we just seen that the body is created from the elements. Power over the elements. 22. And Yeshua could also remember things that had occurred before he was born into mortality, not having the fullness of the cherubim and the flaming sword placed before him. Or in other words, not having a cerebrum that was affected by all the restrictions placed upon the cerebrums of the other children of Adam and Eve. And he could also communicate with the spirit, which is the means given by the father to communicate with his children in a much more concise and consistent manner than that with the rest of us in mortality could do. Again, the Christ could also communicate with the spirit in a much more concise and consistent manner than that which the rest of us in mortality can do. How you think you perceive people's thoughts and the way he communicated with the Most High and received his instructions from the Spirit? Precepts. Let's get a precept. Seal portion 36. Seal portion 36, verse 3. For behold, all things whatsoever that the Most High will have the children of, all things whatsoever that the Lord will have the children of men learn 
and know of the Father, he would have them receive these things through the Holy Spirit, which is the way that the Father instituted in the beginning for his children to receive his guidance and his instructions. All right, so we just read how in verse 23 or 44, he could also communicate with the Spirit, which is the means given by the Father to communicate with his children. And what we read right here in verse 3, he would have the, the Father would have us to receive these things through the Holy Spirit, which is the way that the Father instituted in the beginning for his children to receive his guidance and his instructions. That's why we read all the day in the end, the Holy Spirit is going to be the guide for the remnant, for the elect, for the chosen, for the few who were turning to the most high, the children of Zion. Everything going back to how it was in the beginning, but we got to eat from the tree of life so the veil can be removed. Verse five. For the children of men do not live according to the spirit. And therefore they cannot discern between good and evil by the spirit. That's why they can eat from the tree of knowledge in good and evil. And they can think everything is good and beneficial. When really it's not, it's killing you. Because Lucifer is smarter than you. But spiritually, until you go to the tree of life and start to pick up your armor of God through the sword of God, which is the word, then your discernment increase. Then you can fight back against Lucifer and his minions because you got knowledge, real knowledge, light and truth, which is intelligence according to the most high in Doctrine and Covenant 93. And if they could discern between good and evil from the spirit, which is by the ministrations of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, then they would not need the written word to inspire them to turn to God and keep his commandments. For behold, the spirit will whisper these things unto them. Back to Seal Portion, chapter 44. So we got to open ourselves up by the tree of life so that we can start to receive transmissions from the spirit again. We need that spirit to spirit contact. The spirit is our guide. The guide and also our teacher. In Christ, he taught us the way to get there. That was what our big brother was sent for, to teach us the way back so that we can receive back our powers. All right, verse 24. Seal portion 44, verse 24. And so it was that brother Jesus was born into the world with powers that no other mortal man had ever nor would ever be given and he was commanded by the father through the ministrations of the spirit that he should not use these powers as something be according to the commandments that he should receive from the father and now and this thing was the righteousness of Christ proven in all things for behold he had the power to do many things. Yea, even the power to give life after the order of the flesh and take life from the same order of flesh. All right. That's how he raised up Lazarus because he, he had power to give life after the order of the flesh. And if it were his desire, he could command the elements at his will having the ability to do so because of the body that he received from the direction and pattern of the Father. 
And the father could not prohibit Brother Jesus from using these powers as he wished because of the eternal laws of nature that are given unto them who have this type of body. But they are not restricted in anything that they would do. And nevertheless, the father could give unto him commandments, but it was by the free will and choice of Yeshua that would determine whether or not he would keep the commandments of the father. And for this reason, very few are allowed to have this type of power, which comes from a body like unto the father. That's why Christ said, if you seen me, you seen the father. Because I had the same powers that my father possessed. All right. And Jesus kept the commandments of the father in all things from the beginning. And the father knew that Jesus would keep his commandments. And this was the only reason that the father allowed his son to have a body pattern after his own. All right. Get some precepts. Let's go back to Doctrine and Covenants 93. Starting at verse 20. All right. So we see. Yahweh shall kept the commandments of the father at all times. He never disobeyed him. And he never used his powers just because he wanted to show off and use them. All right. Like he had told Peter one time, do you not know that I can call a legion of e angels at my command? But he didn't. But he had the power and authority to do so. All right. So he was obedient unto the Most High in all things. Doctrine and Covenants 93, verse 20. For, this is Christ speaking to us. For if you keep my commandments, you shall receive of his fullness. Whose fullness? The fullness of the most high. All right. Let's go back and start at verse 19. I give unto you these sayings that you may understand and know how to worship and know what you worship. That you may come unto the father in my name and in due time. Receive of his fullness. For if you keep my commandments, you shall receive of his fullness and be glorified in me as I am in the Father. Therefore, I say unto you, you shall receive grace for grace. And now, verily, I say unto you, I was in the beginning with the Father. And am the firstborn. And all those who are begotten through me, who are begotten through me, are partakers of the glory of the same. And are the church of the firstborn. The church is not a physical building, it is the spirits, it is the people. That follow after Christ. Christ followed the most high in all things. And if we follow after our big brother. We do the works that he did. And we also follow the most high in all things. Which makes us the church of the firstborn. Because the firstborn led us to the way. The truth, the way, and the life, which is the light, the light of men. Ye were also in the beginning with the Father, that which is spirit. Our spirit was also in the beginning with the Father, even the spirit of truth, which is our big brother. Back to sealed portion, 44. And so it is with all of those who shall receive a body like unto the Father or a celestial body 
that shall have the power and glory of the Father according to the order in which it is created. Precept, Doctrine and Covenants 11. Doctrine and Covenants 11. And verse 30. But verily, verily, I say unto you, that as many as receive me, to them will I give power. I will give power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on my name. All right, and this is the same thing he told us in the book of John. So as many as receive him, all right, and we receive him, all right, we don't just believe on his name, we receive him and also believe on his name. But some just believe on the name. They haven't actually received him yet because the Gentiles do not know who he is until we are raised up to teach them the truth of who he is. Therefore, they can also receive him and not just believe on his name. Yeah, they believe in the name of the Christ. All right. They think he white Jesus, but they believe in the name. All right. Even though they worship in an idol. But until the Most High woke us up to reveal the truth unto them and the ones of them that are of the truth can receive the truth, therefore they can receive him. So when they see him, he won't be a stranger to them. They would know that Christ, white Christ is just an idol, but there is a real Christ, but he looked like us. All right. He was a brother, a so-called black man. He was a Hebrew. All right. As many as receive me, to them I will give power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on my name. All right. Back to seal portion 44, verse 31. And once the spirit has been given this body, it shall have the powers of this body. That's how you get your powers back. That's how the X-Men are returning. That's why we got to get the fullness of the gospel so we can get our powers. And we got to have faith and believe and renounce all of the knowledge of good and evil. That's what we got to repent for. We got to stop following celebrities and scientists, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Beyonce, all of the celebrities and idols of the world that we follow. We got to renounce all that, repent, and come unto the Most High by the Word. And the powers of this body to be under the direct control and will of the spirits who possess it. And for this reason, the spirits of all men and women are tested, like we read in the beginning about the test. We all are tested and tried to see if they are worthy of this type of body. And if they are worthy of this type of body, which is celestial, then they shall have all the power of the Most High, becoming one with him in all things. These shall be proven to see if they should do the will of the Father in all things. All right, so that's what we're being tested, to see if we are willing to be like our brother Yeshua. We're being tested to see if we're going to be like Yahweh Shai. And do the will of the Most High in all things. With other lane he didn't place you in and commanded you to work. And the will of the Father in all things are the words of Christ according to the flesh. And in this way is Christ the supreme example for us all. And he has come into the flesh to show unto us all that those who shall receive this power of the Father 
are fully able to abide the will of the Father in all things, whatsoever he shall command them. And in this way, the plan of Lucifer is destroyed. When you follow in the will of the Most High, you destroy the plan of Lucifer. You destroy the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The matrix is falling. It's falling. You heard the angel in Revelation. Babylon is falling. It's falling. The Babylon system is the matrix that is built off the knowledge of good and evil. For the majority of all spirits cannot abide in righteousness in the flesh, but use the limited capacity of their body to disobey the commandments of the Father. And that's why the majority will not receive no power because they had no discipline and no desire to follow the will of the Most High, which is why the majority cannot accept Yahweh Shai. They can't accept the Christ. They can't accept that level of discipline. Disobedient kids will not be allowed back in the house. And because Yahweh Shai had lived his life as an example unto them, they cannot say that it is impossible to live a life in the flesh according to the will of the Father in all things. For Christ had already shown unto them that it can be done. Therefore, if Christ can do it, even having the power of the Father, or no limitations on his power, then any spirit that is righteous can do it. And it is much easier for those who have limited power to live according to the will of the Father. For they cannot be tempted to use the power that they do not have. And we're going over to verse 42, second part of it. And thus, we can see why the children of men are limited in the powers that they possess. None of the children of Satan will be receiving any type of power. Their power is in the lies that they teach and preach. That's the only power that they're going to be given. The power of the tongue. The power to tell lies and to hypnotize you with the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. But Yeshua was not limited in the powers that he possessed. But he restricted himself in these powers according to the will and the commandments of the Father. All right. Now we see the answer to how to get back in the Garden of Eden. We see what it is that Sherubin and Flaming Sword that was placed to the east of the Garden. The Garden is in our mind. That bell of forgetfulness. All right. That's why we got to eat from the tree of life. That's why I say he going to see who going to take hold. Of the tree of life, which is the love of your creator, which you reach through coming to the word. The word feeds your spirit and increase your faith and increase your discernment and increase your light and increase your intelligence, not your knowledge of the world, which is foolishness, but it increase your authority spiritually, your understanding spiritually. Your power spiritually. And it give you. It give you strength. To continue to follow the will. Of the most high. To be like your brother. Yahweh Shai. Yeshia. Brother Jesus. Yeshua. Yehoshua. Whatever name. Float your boat. Alright. But we got to eat from the tree of life. And stay in the word. Because it ain't going to be long until our big brother return. And all things are going back to how they was. And the wicked, we being separated from them right now. Because they not taking hold of the tree of life. And the ones that us that are taking hold of the tree of life are being elevated and separated. 
Alright. Peace.